Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be showing you how we created a Baba Yaga with tin foil, cardboard and Paltai Premium. The foil maquette was approved by the clients. The wings were ultimately removed to make her more in keeping with the classic Baba Yaga mythology. To make this permanent outdoor piece we started with a cardboard armature. The cutouts were based on the proportions of the maquette where the limbs lengthen into a spidery thinness. These were freehand drawn based on the general silhouettes and hot glued together. Using heavy duty tin foil, we filled out the silhouettes of the limbs with the foil balls. Care was taken with the face, the hands and the feet. The foil forms were kept intentionally skeletal, so the final figure was more unnatural and haunting. Then it was time to mix up the Paltaya Premium, the most versatile sculpting medium on the planet, making sure it dangles nicely before we apply it to the sculpture. So the scratch coat was applied about three millimeters thick, enough to make the furrows deep and heavy. The final coat was five millimeters thick. The client liked the look of the scratch coat and requested it be used as the final texture. These shots show the figure brought up to the correct final thickness. Extra care had to be taken with the hands as the digits were separated and unsupported. The hands were traditionally scratch coated with just one layer on the backs and sides. Then the foil was carefully removed. Wire supports were laid in the hollow fingers from the palm sides. These were backfilled solid for strength. For the head cowl, a piece of fabric was cut to the correct size. A five millimeter layer of Peltai Premium was scratch coated onto the cloth. Then the fabric was draped onto her head. The folds fell into place naturally. Once cured, the cowl was lifted off her head, the cloth removed, and the cowl glued into place using Peltai Premium. The necklaces and jewellery were formed on flat sheets of cardboard covered in tape. Small wires were tacked down and the Paltai Premium jewellery was sculpted around the wires to achieve the right delicacy. Once these had cured for five days, they were peeled off the cardboard and affixed onto the figure with more Paltai Premium. The bracelets were done in two halves so they would clamshell around the limbs and then be filled in. The snake was sculpted directly onto her upper arm. Now it was time to add her skirt. The skirt proved quite problematic. It was so vertical that coating it with Paltai Premium proved impossible. Instead, we saturated the towel fabric with just normal orange house paint and allowed it to harden. A layer of foil is covering the figure so the skirt can pull away later. The hard fabric skirt was also coated with foil as a releasing layer, then Paltai Premium was scratch coated onto it. Just looking at some of the other Paltire Premium sculptures sitting on the stage while we were making this piece. After curing for five days, the skirt was removed. The cloth was pulled out. This was cleaned with a wire brush, backfilled and placed back on the figure. Some very talented people at Weta Workshop used polypropylene paints, which are very lasting and weather resistant colors. And here is the final result. A beautiful sculpture, which the client was wildly happy about. And this one is going to be sitting on a tree stump in the client's sculpture garden. It sits at three foot tall and used one big bag of Paltai Premium. 
subscribe to see more projects with our medium and we hope that you consider next time you're going to be making a permanent outdoor piece.